So I have been using CookieBot for over seven years and I've always felt that CookieBot is superior over all its competitors because it was easy to implement, it had great defaults and it was easy to style into the brand of the website that you were putting it on. However, at the start of 2025, CookieBot has been fully integrated into user-centrics and it now has a completely different pricing model and it is a completely new product. And that's why I'm wondering, is CookieBot still the king of cookie banners in 2025? Let's find out. Hey and welcome to the channel, my name is Leon and this channel exists to help you improve your tracking setup so you can get data that you can actually trust. I want to thank everyone for uh, liking my videos and for subscribing to this channel because that really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. As a way to say thank you, I've created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So just head over to the video description to find a free download link there. All right, let's talk about versions. At this moment, you only get the new version if you open up a new account right now. So if you've opened up an account before the start of 2025, you're most likely on an older version of CookieBot. And at this moment, I don't see that that change. M might change in the future, but it looks like the version that you purchased is the version that you're going to stay on. The first version, the old version, I'm going to call that the old version, looks like this. I've made some anonymized screenshots here so you can see wh which version you're on. And this really looks old fashioned, but it worked great. I've used it on a ton of sites. I love this version. Then in 2023, in September 2023, there was this new version revamped, looked a lot better, still worked great. I'm going to call this the 2023 version. And then at the start of 2025, you had this user centric, this new version. I'm going to call this the 2025 version because to, to me, this is a new version. It might have been a product that's been around for a while now under the user centric flag. But for me, it is the new CookieBot, the 2025 version. And what you need to know about all these versions is that uh, depending on the version that you have, you have a different login screen. So the old version, if you go to login, you get two screens you use this login. If you are on the 2023 version or the 2025 version, you use this screen. And you can see that by the screenshots here. And um, of course, this is a little bit tricky when you try to Google something. Um, for instance, if you go to CookieBot and you look in the footer for documentation, developer documentation, you get the documentation for the old version that applies to the old version and it also applies to the 2023 version but it doesn't apply as far as i can see to the 2025 version but i find this a little bit confusing all right let's now talk about prices and i've pulled up a an old version of the pricing page from the wayback machine and um, this is from the beginning of march 2025 and i was to be honest already on the new version so there might be some a b testing going on but this is the old version and uh, the new version looks like this. And there aren't so many differences at first glance. It even looks like they dropped prices a little, like eight here on the old, seven here on the new, 16 on the old, 15 on the new, 34 on the old, 30 on the new. So it looks like they dropped prices a little, but there's a lot more going on. So let's go over the old pricing structure, how they used to structure things, because here it is structured by the number of sub pages. And on a premium package, you would just get all the premium features. On the light version, you only get one domain, but from premium small, you just get all the features. So what I would do is I would just onboard a client of mine to a small package and they would auto upgrade over time. It even says it here, automatically upgrades depending on the number of pages. So it would just count automatically the number of pages on the site and uh, a client would never pay too much. On the new version, the new pricing, it has changed dramatically because it's not priced based on sub pages, it's now priced on sessions and it doesn't automatically upgrade anymore and also the you don't get all the premium features on all packages you get core features on the lowest package and then some essential features and then you need to upgrade to get more features so uh, this was a little bit um, of a hassle for me because I was used to onboarding a client on a small package, but then I noticed that I missed a lot of features that I really needed to get this uh, project um, delivered. So I needed to go back to my client and ask them to upgrade uh, their package, which of course made me look like a, a bit of an idiot and it was a little bit extra hassle. So I didn't really like that. But um, what you will find is that 
there are a lot of features missing from the lower packages. And also 50,000 sessions is not so much. So on the old version, this was the maximum amount that you would pay monthly. I doubt that th this will be enough for many organizations. And also just to give an example, if I implement a cookie banner on the site, I want the style to match as closely to the brand as possible. So I was trying to adjust the border radius and then I got a notice that I needed to upgrade to a larger package in order to change the border radius. And of course that felt ridiculous to me. Like why would you limit that in, in a smaller package? If you're on a smaller package, you will find banners everywhere that tell you to upgrade in order to get the uh, the benefit of the full product how it's structured depending on sessions as opposed to sub pages that's really the big difference i doubt that especially larger organizations will have enough with the 50,000 sessions i think you'll pay a lot more if you factor in like all the sessions that you uh, are going to need so i have used the new 2025 version on one implementation now so I want to tell you a little bit about my experience so far and uh, let's start out with a positive note because the first thing that I noticed with the new version is that they added user management. So a client can open up an account and they can grant me access with my own CookieBot account to their account and uh, that is really something that was lacking from the old versions. I always just needed to ask my clients login details. So they would send me over their email address and their password. And that was really frowned upon by some of my clients. They were like, do you want me to give you my email address and password to log into CookieBot? That was a little bit strange. And, um, and for a modern application like CookieBot, I've always felt like, okay, that's, that's something that's really lacking. And with the new 2025 version, that has now changed. So a client can open up their account. They can give me access. Also, one thing that I really liked so far is their support. I will tell more about that later, but I really had some struggles getting going with the new 2025 version, but their support was quick and patient. That has really helped me through and getting the project delivered by the end. So the first part that I really struggled with, with um, implementing CookieBot is documentation and the fact that there are three versions live. So I would just ask Google, like how I would implement different features. And I would end up on pieces of documentation that didn't really apply to my version, but it was, wasn't always clear. So I have a couple of examples that I found here. On the website, you have the, in the footer, you have the developer documentation. So with the knowledge that I currently have, I believe this applies to the old version and the 2023 version but not the new 2025 version. And also if you go to support, select your admin interface. So you have these version, but the new version, it feels like maybe they didn't even really document that yet. So that was really a struggle. And that's, I, I believe one of the things that really caused me to rely on support so much. Also, I had some startup issues when my client invited me into their account. The invitation never came through. And I believe that has something to do with the fact that I already have a 2023 version on my regular email address and the client has a 2025 version. So I believe it has something to do with two versions colliding there. I worked around that by just creating an email alias and having my client invite me over there and that worked fine. But of course it was just a hassle going back again to my client for another change in the software. Also, the banner at first didn't show, so I had to contact support to get them reset the whole thing. And after that, things worked again. Uh, so some startup issues there. And even today, when researching for this video, I logged into the different interfaces and I got the wrong interface with my, like my new email alias. So I have a 2025 version on my email alias, but because I've logged in and probably had some, some kind of cookie set there, I got the 2023 version all of a sudden and I got an onboarding sequence there even though I already have everything set up there. So just a little bit strange. So then some practical things that I found lacking. First of all, the image upload for the logo is gone. So on the CookieBot banner, you can display your own logo. And usually with the older versions, you could just upload an image file and that would work fine. But um, that is gone. You need to link a logo yourself. So that means that um, you can just use the logo that you currently already have on your site and you just fill in that link. But it turned out that on my site, we were using a an SVG logo. And of course, an SVG file format didn't really 
work with the cookie bot design. So I had to convert the logo into a PNG file and ask the developer to upload that to their server and then link that file. And of course, it's a small inconvenience, but things like that really make implementing a cookie banner a little bit more of a hassle. Development domains is another function that I found lacking in the new 2025 version of CookieBot. Most sites these days have a production environment that's, that you see live when you type in the domain name, but you also have a couple of other environments, for instance, for the developer to implement new features, but also for the client to test out once the developer publishes those features to, into the site. So they first test it on a like separate environment before going live with those features. Well, in the older versions of CookieBot, you had the option to list your production environment, and those were the sites that you would actually pay for, but also you could list development domains and you wouldn't, wouldn't pay for those domains. You would just get a small watermark on those, which says this is a testing banner. But then you could just test CookieBot on all different different versions of your site, all different environments without paying more. And now you need to go into a package that supports multiple domains in order to be able to test all your development domains. So my next struggle with the new version of CookieBot is getting it to work with a content security policy. For those of you who aren't aware of what that is, it's basically a security measure that you put on your site where you tell the site not to load images, scripts, styles from domains that aren't whitelisted. And to be honest, getting things to work, getting Tech Manager to work, CookieBot to work, of, or other providers to work with the content security policy is always a bit of a struggle. But in the older versions, my experience has been that you could just whitelist the CookieBot domain and that the thing would work. With the new version, they are loading a couple of images, for instance, the icon, the close icon, which is basically just an X icon. They aren't loading that from their own server, but those icons are base. 64 encoded. It's just a different technology of loading images. And the downside of that is that because they're not loaded from the user centrics domain, they are blocked by our content security policy. I haven't found a workaround for this yet. I probably will just need to include the full base 64 uh, encoded image into my content security policy for things to work. But then again, if the image changes, would I need to change the content security policy as well? To be honest, I still need to research this. I don't have a definitive uh, solution, but this was one of the struggles, one of the annoyances that I encountered with getting the cookie banner delivered. The next struggle that I encountered was that the new cookie banner uses a shadow DOM. It is not an iframe, but it, it's basically a separate page within your own page. It isolates the cookie banner from the rest of the page and it has some advantages. So you have less spillover from styles and scripts on the site. You probably have less chance that things conflict with each other. But on the other hand, you cannot style the banner from outside and you also cannot do click tracking from outside. You cannot use click triggers from GTM to track clicks. You really need to rely on the cookie bot product to style the banner and to do click tracking. And uh, to me, I lose a lot of flexibility this way. And of course, they might have done this for different reasons, but to me, this is really a downside. My last struggle with uh, the new 2025 version of CookieBot, one of the most important points in my list, is I have a very particular way of implementing consent mode. What I like to do in Google Tag Manager is I like to set consent as early as possible in the page load. And I found that that ensures that the product or that the setup is as stable as possible. And uh, I did that in the old versions by reading the preferences of a user directly from the cookie. And in the old versions, you had just this cookie consent cookie that would ju just list, okay, marketing true, analytics true, etc. In the new version, I found that this was a lot harder to do. I needed to do a, a workaround because they don't store the consent for the entire category. They store the consent per tool. So they scan your site, they see, oh, Google Analytics is on there. Is there permission for analytics via the banner? Where I would just much rather see, okay, people have given me permission for marketing or for analytics and I will figure out the rest. So my tutorial on implementing consent mode, the manual way, so it's one of the most viewed videos on my channel. I will link it down below, but that method really doesn't work that well anymore with the new 
user centrics 2025 cookie bot banner that way of implementing really gave me a lot of flexibility as well like if a user had custom requirements or maybe even local differences so here in the netherlands you have an exception for analytics cookies we we can use those without permission so in those cases i could just build my own custom consent mode setup and um, that became really hard in the new cookie bot version so at the start of the video i asked the question is cookiebot still the king of cookie banners in 2025 and i've already told you i have a long history with cookiebot i have used it on dozens and dozens of implementations over the years and i've always felt that the product was superior over all its competitors in many cases a client came up to me with, who already had a cookie banner and of course i just ran with it but i always felt those products to be inferior compared to cookiebot because cookiebot was just so easy to use had great defaults and it was easy to style in the brand that you were of the site that you were putting it on and uh, the price for what you got was also very reasonable unfortunately i feel this is no longer the case I feel user centrics or Cookiebot has really lost its ease of use and its elegance. And part of me feels that the product was made by and made for lawyers and not for marketeers. I live in a fast paced world of marketing, both smaller organizations, but also larger organizations with hundreds and sometimes thousands of employees. But I'm asked to deliver a cookie banner and consent mode implementation within a reasonable amount of time and that means i cannot spend an entire week on setting up a cookie banner and uh, with user centrics i feel like they kind of over engineered the product a little bit too much and they made it more difficult instead of more easy to get compliancy within your online marketing my guess is that they are just shifting their focus to a different market so i'm not their, their target audience anymore they're just shifting their focus to maybe organizations that want all these features or want all this this kind of approach but yeah to me at this moment the answer to the original question is no i don't believe cookiebot is still the king of cookie banners anymore in 2025 unfortunately i have to add I, so, I also want to add that i'm open to change my mind i really would love to hear from cookiebot themselves like why are you going into this direction what's the reasoning behind it it would really help me understand and maybe even consult with my own clients like is this a good fit for you or not but at this moment i'm not really happy with where things are going so for smaller projects i'm just developing my own cookie banner i found that to be the easiest way to get um, compliance for for those parties they not everyone wants to pay monthly but for larger projects i will be reviewing a lot of alternatives over the next couple of weeks and months so if i have found something i will very likely make a new video on that as well if you have recommendations or if you own a company or work at a company that delivers the same value as uh, Cookiebot or UserCentrix does, please let me know underneath this video or you can just find me online, send me a message. I would love to hear from you because I'm really looking for something different that delivers the same value that the original Cookiebot product had but now has lost in my point of view. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have a question or if you have a recommendation, if you want me to do a video or you have a video idea that, that you want me to do next, please leave a comment down below. I always love hearing from you and I try to respond to as many comments as I can. I wanna thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.